Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to attempt to show you a subtlety of short-circuiting with our logical operations that just it caught me recently. And I was kind of surprised, and it took me a little while to debug this. And it, it probably shouldn't have, but I just thought I would share it here on C++ Weekly for all of you to, you know, look at this and, and think about it yourselves and see if you've ever had the similar kind of issue come up. Now, for those who aren't aware, short-circuiting in C++ and any language that has short-circuiting means that it's only going to execute as much of the operation as it needs to. And this is often a good thing. So if you say if, so if we do something like this, now this isn't going to compile, but I'm just using the compiler explorer as an editor at the moment. If operation one and operation two. Now if operation one fails, then it's not going to execute operation 2 because it already knows that this condition has failed. Now I got started in BASIC and BASIC didn't have short circuiting but I have been programming in languages that do have short circuiting since about 1995 approximately. So this is definitely something that I am used to now. And this this comes up in the real world. We might do something like if argc is greater than 1 and arg v of 1 something something in here because we're going to double check to make sure that we actually have more than one argument and then we know that we can access the uh, second argument in the list. So I was recently programming working on my ARM emulator that I have mentioned a couple times now on here and I had code that looked kind of like this. Now there is a subtle logic bug in this code and I will leave it up here for a few seconds to give you a moment to look at it. And Perhaps you'll see the issue. I did not immediately see it. I made a change similar to this. And then I had down here some like check. If I did work, then do some other operation. And I think this is specifically like I was going through my GUI event loop and if something changed then I knew that I needed to redraw a certain part of the GUI. Basically like this and we have it in a way that compiles here although it's not terribly meaningful to look at. It took me probably 30 minutes to debug this before I realized that what was happening is I never executed my try doing work more than once. I would stay here in this busy loop, constantly checking some condition to see if it was true while I was looping around. And then I would get here and I would say, did work equals did work, or try doing work. And if did work was now true, because at one point we had come through and actually did do some work, then it would never execute this try doing work ever again. So it only execute it at most once, no matter how long check condition was actually true for. So this was bad. And I ended up changing it to something like, so this way I could have gotten the actual logic that I wanted from it. So I'm actually doing work as long as the condition is true, and then only updating the did work flag when that's the correct thing to do. This, though, has so many little subtleties in it. I could have done this instead. So in this case, I will execute the first condition no matter what. Did I try do, 
Did I do some work when I executed try doing work? If I did, in fact, then did work will be true. Otherwise, if did work was already true, then the condition remains true. Seems like a pretty good idea. I ultimately did not go with this one, though, because this seemed basically too, ref too fragile for refactoring here. If someone in the future were to look at this line of code and get this logic backward again, then we would end up in the same situation again, where we're only executing work once per check condition flag being set for whatever thing was going on here. So this is just an interesting little thing here, and maybe just an FYI. If you are relying in some non-obvious way for logical short-circuiting to do some particular um, thing that you want it to do, then I would suggest a comment or a subtle refactoring to the something so that it is clear to the future readers of your code what the actual goal was. Now, to be clear, the kind of check that we do like all the time, again, this isn't going to compile, I'm not going to bother making it compile, but if you're doing something like this, where you are relying on short-circuiting to first check if a condition is true and then do something with it, that's perfectly fine. Do that throughout your code, that's good. But I think this is one of the maybe just handful of times in my entire career that a short circuiting with an OR operation just threw me off and it took me a little while to debug it. So, so just a silly mistake on my part, but I thought I would share it here on the show and I hope you liked this episode.